Has anyone here experienced rejection at any point? Hands are already, already up. Rejection of any kind. You know, the nicest letter is the letter of rejection. That's the nicest letter you can ever read. Oh, the application process was a very hard one. We had a hard time making a choice. Unfortunately, we can take you at this time. And they will end and say, I hope you have a good day. How can I have a good day when you just rejected me? The worst kind of rejection is not the rejection for a job offer. It's not really rejection you get when you apply to a school for an admission. In my own estimation, the worst kind of rejection is the rejection that comes from people close to you, your family, friends, and people you want to help, honestly. Or the rejection that comes to you when you mean good for people, when you want to help, when you want to be there, and you are rejected. Rejection could be very bad. If you have not experienced rejection, don't pray for it. So what are we talking about rejection today? We are talking about rejection because Jesus was rejected in his hometown of Nazareth. Two months before Jesus showed up in Nazareth, he left home. He went into the desert to pray for 40 days and 40 nights and fasted. And after that, he comes back and became a very known preacher, a miracle worker, a healer. His faith spread everywhere, and he decided to come home to his people to preach to them on the, on the, on the Sabbath. He comes to the Sabbath. He reads from the scripture, from Isaiah 61. And after that, he started preaching to them. His preaching was powerful, the word of God says. Gracious words came from his mouth. And people were wondering, what is going on here? But some people said, is he not the carpenter's son, the son of Joseph? Where did he get this knowledge? Suddenly they became angry with him. Suddenly they turned around. They even became physical with the Lord. The word of God said they took him out, they pushed him out from their town, and taking him to a hill, they wanted to push him down. But Jesus walked away from their midst. At some point, they froze. They could not touch him again because it was not yet time. So he walked away from their midst, but he was rejected. Because they knew him grew up. They knew his background. They knew his father to be a common local carpenter. They knew the mother, a male woman in the, in, the, in, the, in the city. She wasn't one of the big women. By the way, Nazareth was insignificant in those days. Remember, Nathaniel would ask in John chapter 1 verse 46, can anything good come out from Nazareth? Already, Nazareth was pushed on the side. It was a dead end. Nobody goes to Nazareth for anything. And now the people were surprised that in our midst comes someone who is so great. Someone anointed by the Holy Spirit. Someone who can preach. Someone who can heal. Someone who can transform life. Where did he get this knowledge? They didn't see Jesus go into any school. There was no teacher known to be connected to Jesus. But then the power of God was in him. They could not accept the good things that came around them because they were familiar with the background of Jesus. But what they did not know is that your background has no right to give your back on the ground. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. God can use anyone. God can raise anyone. God can elevate anyone. God can transform anyone. God can do the undoable with anyone. It doesn't matter who your father is or who your mother is. God sees you as an individual with the potentials of greatness. They did not accept Jesus because they were familiar with his background. The same thing happens to us. Maybe we have become so familiar with the church, with Jesus in the Eucharist, that sometimes we come with so, so much indifference, or sometimes we come with even with disrespect. 
Or sometimes we all just walk into the church, we forget that this is the house of God, the gate of heaven. And we become so familiar with our practices in, in our religion that we don't see the holy as holy again. But the point was that Jesus was rejected by his people and he walked away. Jesus walked away. The same thing can happen to you. When you reject Jesus, he will walk away. When you reject God, he will walk away. When you reject the love, love will walk away. If you reject peace, peace will not come to you. When you reject goodness, goodness cannot come to you. Whatever you reject will eject itself from your ambience. Whatever you accept will come to you. When you are rejected, do not reject yourself. That will be pushing yourself to the extremes. Sometimes when people are rejected, they feel they are not going again. They feel their work has ended. They feel there is nothing they can do again. You didn't get that job, I'm not going to make any other application. Oh, I won't go there again. There is no effort again coming from me. No! When you are rejected, don't reject yourself. Don't ever think about it. Because, the second point, see rejection as a redirection. Your rejection could be a redirection. When Jesus was rejected in Nazareth, what happened? He redirected his words, his actions, his power to Capernaum. My dear friends, when a door closes, it means another door is about to open or already open for you. That a door closed does not mean that another door cannot open. No. Sometimes God will willingly allow rejection to happen in your life. It could be a step to that place where God wants you to be. That is why you should not reject yourself and inject yourself. Yes, that rejection could be a redirection to a better place, a better platform, a place of excellence, a place of peace, a place where you will have divine elevation, a place where you will expand, a place where you have all that you have been looking for, a place where you have no limitation. When you are rejected, See it as a redirection. Lastly, walk away with love. It is an option. It is a choice. You are rejected. You can walk away with anger, with regret. You might walk away crumbling, groaning. You might walk away with so much hatred. No. Walk away with love. It is when you walk away with love that you find your redirection. It is when you walk away with love that you find what God has put in for you somewhere. When Jesus was rejected, he walked away with love. He did not hate his people. He did not curse them. He did not wish them bad. He walked away with love. Why will you walk away with love when you are rejected? Because love conquers all things, even rejection. That was what St. Paul tells us in the second reading. Love conquers all things, even rejection. Love endures all things, even rejection. When you have love, you have everything. Because 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 tells us that love is love. And St. Paul writing to the Romans, in Romans 13, 8, he says, Oh, nobody, nothing except what? Love. Love is what I owe you. Love is what we owe one another. Remember in life, what you give is what you receive. If you give me hatred, as I am now, if I get hatred from you, bet me I will give you love. Why? Because that love I gave you will come back to me. If you multiply and come back to me. What you give is what you get. Don't give hatred and you expect love. No, no way. So give love. And that was why St. Paul was telling us today, there are three things that will last. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest is love. What can we do without love? Love is our life. Love is the greatest gift given to us by God. And love is not what most of us think. Love is not how you feel. Love is not what you hear people say. Love is not the songs you hear. Love is not how beautiful a place is. No. 
Love is not about lights and flowers, no. Love is what you do. Love is not just a noun. Love is a verb. Love is something that goes out of itself. Love seeks out the loved. And that is why I tell people that the opposite of love is not hatred. No. The flip side of love is selfishness. When you love, you are selfless. When you love, you are sacrificial. But when you don't love, you are selfish. Rejection. 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 Whenever you are rejected in life, I want you to learn this lesson once and for all. When you face rejection, don't look down. That is defeat. Don't look at people. Don't look around. That will be distraction. Look up. That is salvation. God bless you. Amen.